I'm Matt Sweeney, and this is Guitar Moves, and I'm here with my old friend, who's a young man, uh, Blake Mills. I was in California working on a record, and this L.A. dude kept on telling me that I had to meet this kid who was from Malibu. You have to meet this kid. He's 19 years old, he's from Malibu, and he's the best guitar player in the world. And so my response was, why the fuck would I ever, <sighs> ever want to meet a 19-year-old Malibu kid who's the best guitar player in the world? And, and dude kept on insisting it, and he brought Blake by, and I couldn't help but, but like him in spite of the fact that he is uh, from Malibu, from Malibu and, and a really good guitar Still player. Still 19. That's how I met Blake, and I don't know, how'd you meet me, Blake? Under very similar circumstances. <laughs> I, I, was a, I was a big fan already. Fan of this motherfucker right here? Yeah. Yes. Of, your, of your, your big face. If you were going to teach somebody guitar, what were some, how would you start? That's the question? I don't know. I'm just fucking <laughs> just starting to do One of my favorite things to do, um, and one of the things that keeps me interested in guitar, is 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 coming up with ways to get it to sound like other instruments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think a common trap that a lot of players fall into is that they they pick their favorite guitar players and they grow up and they study those styles and they, they unlock whatever those secrets are. But it ends up kind of stunting the advancement, I think, of the instrument. What people don't often pick out from Jimmy's playing, for example, is that it, it, it seems like he was listening to horn players and coming up with Hendrix, phrases yeah. and yeah, yeah, Hendrix, yeah, like like that that. It's the guys that, that tend to figure out a way to not get the guitar to sound like Jimmy Page or get it to sound like Elmore James or, or Buddy Holly. It's like those things, have, those things have been discovered. And it's beautiful to hear somebody play like that or to hear those guys play. But the guys that really seem to, to, to make big uh, steps and advancements are the ones who, who seem to be obsessed with wind players with with Middle Eastern instruments. Mm -hmm. The sitar, for example, the strings sit on these curved frets and the curved frets arc, you know, there's, there's no fretboard. Mm -hmm. So as you fret a string, you're pushing against this piece of metal, but you can continue to push down and bend the note past, you know, where the fret actually exists. Right. A lot of times what you hear is a, is a guy who will, who will push down uh, um, at the top of the note, and then release it, and so it, it's like a, it's like a, mm -hmm. you know, the, the 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 note starts out higher, and then quickly gets back down. You can do that by bending. No, but you can slide too, which is a really really cool sound. <laughs> It's a cool effect. <laughs> so, right, so. Yeah, right, so but if you just bend and then don't have vibrato, it's, it's, it's a little more authentic, a little more authentic right. sounding. I mean, the, these guys are, and then, this is like palm to forehead territory for dudes who actually play the sitar, but it's great for guitar players. Yeah, I mean, and again, I, I think the great thing about the great thing about guitar is, is it. Nobody takes it seriously. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's an instrument for assholes. It's like the and Green Party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's sort of for assholes. <laughs> it's so uh, But it is. It's this. It, it like guitar is a cool thing where you could just do a really ch cheap, shitty version of something beautiful, like a horn part or a sitar part. And you could do it on guitar, and it sounds cool. And you're and you're doing such a grave disservice to what you're ripping off and and <laughs> and you sound awesome. Open it up a little bit if you want. Oh by the way, when cats say open it up it means turn up your amp and all that all that word. It means undo a button. Yeah. The, the 
scale that, that, that you're using is kind of this, uh, is sort of the big giveaway, the first big giveaway, which is like you have certain half steps that, that the flat five thing, um, the, the major seventh thing, which is... So. Yeah, and then basically the rest of it, you can, you can use a major scale. So you, it's a major scale with a flat five. So you use Yeah, and you know what? Then, uh, what, are those, what are those little... Little well, just kind of... You can, it doesn't matter where you start from, but... If it's too exaggerated, it doesn't quite have the same effect. But what was that? Ew. Do it again. Here's... Oh. Yeah, so you, 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 you get your hand up somewhere on the neck and... and as you strike the string, you kind of race thing. to the note. Yeah. Yes. So if you do it on each note, like right, right, right. You, you just have this sort of effect that there aren't frets. Where you pluck in that motion will determine kind of whether it sounds like Indian or it sounds like you're, you know, seasick. <laughs> Cuba was amazing. The stuff that those guys do with with really simple voicing, it's all about the placement and it's all about like how they get from one chord to the next. As far as trips go, it was profound. I mean, it was right? really a heavy one, yeah. I went down there uh, to work on a, a record. So we're down in Cuba. Uh, Don Wes was producing it. So it what, Don like Wes calls you up, like, dude, come down to Cuba? Or? He's like, you want to go to Cuba? And it was two days after I got off the road. Right. Um, so I was kind of fried already, but you can't say no to Cuba. Yeah. And so the day before I went to Cuba, I'm in Santa Monica at the guitar store getting strings and stuff like that. And Ry Cooter walks in. No. Yeah. And normally... So Ry, Ry Cooter for the camera is this... Is a guitar player. He's an play. unbelievable guitar player who, who arguably, I guess his, his, his probably his most successful record was this thing called Buena Vista Social Club that he made with a group of Cuban musicians down there, and it was very public that he went down to Cuba to make this record, right. and it won a Grammy. Like, and, so I bump into him, and I and and I don't normally, you know, invade and this dude is people's also like privacy. Blake's, the, yeah, he's this is like he's Blake's like, hero guy. Yeah, he's um, he's he's the the shit. And uh, and I said, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, not to disturb you in what you're doing, but I got to take advantage of uh, of the, the fact that I, yeah, like I'm I'm going to Cuba tomorrow, and I wonder if I could pick your brain about a couple of things. And so we sat, we talked for a few minutes about how to get guitars down there, and and what to bring and what not to bring, what to expect, what they have there, and the current, the electricity down there is, is uh, at a different voltage, and so a lot of stuff that you bring won't end up working, and the stuff that does work, it's under underfed, you know, undercharged, and will sound much different. And you can't prepare for anything. Everything will break. Something will break in everything, and, and, and uh, you go and you, you, you make do and you have a good time.
that's Blake Mills with the uh, this installment of Guitar Moves. Thanks, Blake. Uh, it was a blast. Yeah, I mean that was pretty fun. Right? It was fun. I mean, it's fun for people like me, of which there are uh, unfortunately many, you know, with, that like to hear people talk about nerdy shit, and and then there are um, the people that that will probably point and laugh at us on the message boards. Let them. Thank mm -hmm. you.